Well, hello everyone. How are you? My name is Jaya Bino. Welcome to the J Man Show on Being in Studios, Channel 23. We have a wonderful show today. We have a wonderful guest today, Dr. Maya Tiabalo. Good to see you on the show today. It's good to be here, Jaya. Yeah, absolutely. You're a professor at Washington Community College. I, I mean, yes. Right, I got it right. Yeah, you got it right. Awesome. You got it right. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you, what made you want to come up, come into teaching, and become a professor? So interestingly enough, becoming a professor, teacher, instructor, mm -hmm. I like to say educationist, was something that um, I didn't even have on my horizon. Uh -huh. uh, my mother told me and my brother Nate at one point in time that we would be teachers, and we kind of laughed it off. And <laughs> so I never really thought about it in terms of being something that I will actually do. Uh, however, my brother um, made a interesting uh, point to me in terms of going into teaching um, IT. Oh. Uh, but previous to that, at the University of Hartford, I became a adjunct um, accounting instructor and um, earned a um, acknowledgement by one of my students within the first two semesters of me teaching. And so um, who's who in teaching acknowledged me uh, as a a good teacher and oh. uh, <laughs> the, the rest is pretty much history. Okay, mm -hmm. so you actually, so you actually acting Dean of, of Liberal Arts uh, Society. What is that like, that change for you? Like? That is a huge change. So as an administrator, you get to see behind the curtain. And uh -huh. I feel like uh, Dorothy uh, acknowledging individual, the individual that was behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. And so it's come with uh, a lot of uh, challenges, but good challenges from the perspective that it's helped me to understand um, higher education uh, a lot more in terms of it being a business mm -hmm. that is in the business of serving its students. I see. Wow. And um, I see you've got, you've got some teachers recognitions, nominations, you've done a whole lot of publications. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, by going through the doctoral program at the University of Hartford, which is where uh, a lot of my higher ed, um, well, not even a lot, all of my degrees come from. So I have four degrees. I uh, started off with a GED, and I then got a Bachelor's of Science in um, Accounting, and then went on to get a Master's of Professional Accounting, beyond that an MBA in finance, and then I earned my doctorate in educational leadership, all from the University of Hartford, mm -hmm. which is in West Hartford, Connecticut. And so that journey tended to be one that focused on a lot of academic discipline. Um, by earning my master's degree, it allowed for me to actually look at uh, teaching as an opportunity. And so what my mother would say is that, uh, I told you so. I told you you would be teachers because both my brother and I are both um, teachers. Mm -hmm. And so as uh, part of higher ed, we've actually made our mark in helping other individuals realize uh, their, their path, their passion, uh, and the respective disciplines that we've taught. Yeah, I definitely agree, and because I, I love your model, Team Up Mr. Dreamboy, that's how I would say good thing since I graduated, I should see you know. Absolutely, yeah. so interestingly enough, you were one of my uh, information systems technology uh, students yeah. uh, for the microcomputer yeah. applications course, and uh, teamwork makes a dream work is something that I have spread mm -hmm. um, in my model as my signature in my email, and so I, I wholeheartedly believe it. As, um, the uh, 1990s Bulls championship team has stuck out with me with uh, Rodman, Jordan, <laughs> Pippen, yeah. you know, really making a big difference in terms of how it is that they accomplish what they needed to accomplish, but they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it by themselves. Yes. And so with that being said, teamwork makes your dream work totally is something that um, even in higher ed and all industries beyond that, uh, it takes more than just one person to get the job done. I definitely agree, and we need more people like yourself to help these, you know, people get a degree and realize what they're worth. You know, I definitely agree, and because you definitely inspire me as a student. You know, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, what inspires you to do what you do? What inspired me? Um, I think the thing that inspired me most is understanding, after um, several semesters of teaching, that. The teaching that I do is not just to that cohort of students, mm -hmm. but if it is that what I've, I've said in class 
actually resonates with the student. Students have come back and told me that they've shared it with their friends and family. So I'm not just teaching that cohort of students, but I'm teaching everyone that they come in contact with in terms of what they believe was valuable from mm -hmm. being in a class with me. Well, that's all the way here. Um, and um, I hear that Austin is from having, a, having like a podcast for like for um, people that want to pursue media. Um, can you talk about, about that? Well, interestingly enough, we have a um, associate's degree program okay. called the Broadcast Media Technology Program. Um, it's part of the professional studies um, division. And so it's an opportunity for students to come into a studio like this um, mm -hmm. to learn about the ins and outs of uh, broadcast media technology, as well as other aspects such as podcasting. That's wonderful to hear. Um, mm -hmm. so, so, um, so what do you have planned for the summer? In plans for the summertime? Now it's, well, it's getting beautiful. Yeah, well, <laughs> in terms of the summer, I've already got the summer kicked off with several things. So I just, this past Saturday, actually had a 18-hole um, golf tournament. Oh, that's wow. my second one. Um, I only ended up doing nine holes, but that's okay because uh, during my very first tournament, I actually got my first birdie. And so I'm planning on enjoying the summer by golfing. That's enough. I know you're you in the golf. You know, I used to play golf. <laughs> I, I used to yeah. play golf as a kid. You know, my mom and I loved to manage golf. I, you know, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, what, what else do you like to let you do for fun when you're not working? When I'm not working, I like to sleep. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel you. Oh man, yeah. it's 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 awesome because it it just is. Your body needs that opportunity to actually recuperate, yes. and so after working some pretty long hours, mm -hmm. uh, I like to do nothing more than just to nap and just be at peace in my own little environment. I feel because I that's how I felt when I was, when I was, I was a system, which I want to do homework and sleep, you know, because, mm -hmm. yeah, but, you know, as well as travel, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, where you go, so I see, where you go to watch, watch you travel when you have time? Um, I've actually been to San Diego. I've been to Texas. Um, wow. I've been up and down the, well, not even up and down. I've actually been all the way to Florida. And back, um, I took my first cruise last oh, wow. year, and mm -hmm. so I uh, got the cruise bug in me. I don't <laughs> like how much it costs, but that's yeah. all right. Um, I, I I lived to cruise again, so yeah. it was a good adventure. Yeah, I actually went on a cruise last for my birthday, and my cousin and I moved on. We took a um, MSC cruise to um, to um, Bahamas and Key West. Nice. It was wonderful. Okay. I went mean, jet skiing and. Play with some of the some of the dolphins. It was wonderful. Awesome. So what cruise, what cruise did you go on? I went on a carnival cruise. Oh, carnival? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I got to go to the Dominican Republic mm -hmm. where I uh, rode on a quad <laughs> across the beach. Awesome. That was awesome adventure. Yeah. Yeah, we actually took off a cruise in 2018. We, we, my cousin and I, um, my aunt, we went to Mexico. That was wonderful. Nice. And, yeah, yeah. So we went to a cruise. And my next cruise I want, I want to do is, is what Disney World Cruise, Disney Cruise. Okay. How about that you? Like plan. Um, if anything, it's going to be another Carnival cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, soon, soon to be seen, though. I yeah. just got to pick the actual destination in terms of where I want to go. Oh, yes. I hear you. I feel you. Mm -hmm. So um, have, you, have, have you had some publication? Have, have you written a book? Uh, I, I've published. I've Oops, published. Okay. Right. Um, That's wonderful. In regards to uh, the publishing is really and truly to, to make sure that I fulfill my doctoral program uh, <laughs> requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have some books inside of me that I would like to get out. And so right now they're just in a manuscript um, phase right now. Okay. So what advice can you give um, our, our students that want to come, that want to be like a professor, or teacher? What, what advice can you give them? So interesting enough, and in, in regards to becoming a professor, adjunct professor, um, specifically in a community college, the value of the community college is is immense because mm -hmm. it gives an individual an opportunity to not only go to school for less money than um, a four-year university, mm -hmm. but it gives them opportunity to learn more about themselves. And so if it is that someone wanted to pursue becoming a professor um, based on what the requirements are, you would need a master's mm -hmm. degree. But I would say to um, really focus in on the, the discipline that they actually have a passion for and identify opportunities to e either share that information as a mentor and then build up their credentials in terms of their degrees and experience and volunteering in order to 
uh, then identify if they want to actually become a professor, mm -hmm. adjunct professor, um, and beyond. I definitely agree. That's wonderful information we all need to hear. You know, um, so who is, who is your mother growing up? Who inspired you growing up? Who inspired me growing yeah. up? Hmm. My mother inspired me, but um, I think just having an understanding of that I could be pretty much anything I wanted to be inspired me. Um, I will say this, though. Mm -hmm. Individuals that told me that I couldn't get something done inspired me. Mm -hmm. Because I always got to prove them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so they you. gave yeah. the gave me the fuel to my fire to actually prove them wrong in terms of getting things done. Well, if you can prove anybody wrong, that's good, you know, because that fringe you made it, you know. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick break right now and we'll go back, back and we'll go back with my, Dr. Maya Ball. This is the Jamie Show. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Absolutely. That was, that was wonderful. Hey. Yeah, that was super. Do you I just tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to the Jamin Show. I'm your host, Jay Bino, coming to you live from BN Bain Studios. My guest today is Dr. Maya T. Ball from um, at Dean of Liberal Arts at Rockford Community College. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, welcome back, everyone. So, my next question is, what do you think people's journey should be in life? At so, interestingly enough, that's that's a that's an interesting question. I think individuals who have a passion for what they have a passion mm -hmm. for should pursue it. Um, as I've experience a lot of students um, sometimes they don't know what it is that they would like to actually mm -hmm. do yeah. I, I say f for them to actually be more in tune with themselves mm -hmm. right um, a lot of times when individuals touch base with the college environment they're they're looking for specific types of things but I think one of the things that I would actually stress most about um, students finding their pathway would be to have an understanding of what it means to be a student. A lot of community college students have a variety of different things that they are um, having to do outside of the community mm -hmm. college environment. And so understanding the responsibility of being a student is important mm -hmm. uh, because it comes with a lot of work. That's and, true. And so outside of being a college student, um, you have uh, other responsibilities. And with those other responsibilities, I like to bring to light that we all share something in common. Yes. You want to know what that is? Absolutely. We all share the same 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <we> do. <laughs> so if you multiply that by seven, then you have 168 hours and an entire week. And so a part of a community college student's um, journey is going to be on campus or online in terms of fulfilling their academic mm -hmm. duties. And one of the things that I'm finding to be the most important thing that students have to do, they have mm -hmm. to remember to do this. Mm -hmm. Remember to consult your syllabus. So yes. every instructor is going to give you a syllabus and everything that's laid out in terms of that course is on the syllabus. And so I can't stress that the value of the syllabus mm -hmm. enough because more often than not, I'm asking the question, have you read your syllabus? And more often than I'd like to admit, most times it, it has not been read. Yeah. Okay, so it's one of those things where um, understanding your role and responsibility as a student will weigh with much value as it is that you take your journey as, as a student, not even just a community college student, but just a student um, in general um, at whatever uh, institution that you're attending. So yeah. it's very important. So key word, mm -hmm. <laughs> syllabus. Yeah, that applies to me too. I was just too added for my syllabus too, you know, so I know what you mean. Absolutely. Absolutely, it applies to everybody, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was your college experience like being in college? Uh, so I went to a private institution, um, University of Hartford in West Hartford, Connecticut. I did not get to live on campus, so uh -huh. I do not know what on campus dorm living is like, but that's perfectly fine because I was within a stone's throw of the actual college uh -huh. and it saved me money. Mm -hmm. And um, with that being said, I, I was pretty much on campus for courses, uh, a few activities, and back home mm -hmm. 
So, you know, it, it was more me making sure that I stay focused. I didn't pledge. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty much all academics for me. Wow. Now, now how did the pandemic affect you when we were shut down? Oh, the pandemic. Because I know because we, we had to go to Zoom, you know, teams. So what was it like for you? Oh boy. Well, the pandemic hit everybody across mm -hmm. the globe, right? Yes. And so we went into emergency mode, and everybody had to get equipped to start teaching online. Mm -hmm. And so for me, as as you notice, when I was in class, I don't sit down when I teach. Uh -huh. And so the pandemic had me sedentary. So I'm sitting mm -hmm. as I teach, and it's a whole different type of dynamic. Um, and I couldn't wait for the pandemic to actually uh, cease, be ceased and desisted. Mm -hmm. Because interestingly enough, uh, being on campus uh, is really where it's all at. Yes. I mean, I understand the, the purpose for being online, but because it's um, one of the things that I was used to doing in terms of being on campus and in front of the class, it, it was quite the adjustment, but mm -hmm. I made it through. Hey, it's me too, because, you know, because it was actually kind of easy because I you was know, all long on in, how much more time do you still to figure out this stuff, you know? So, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I miss being in class, I miss, I miss, I miss my friends. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You mm -hmm. don't get that social interaction. Um, a lot of times cameras were off, so mm -hmm. yeah. uh, students were, either out and about mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> taking class or or just you know not on camera but uh, it it makes you really value mm -hmm. the whole in-person interaction such as such as this interview yeah. right mm -hmm. being face to face versus being on zoom is completely different yes so what do you see so what do you see, for, see yourself years from now where do I see myself years from now Successful. Yeah, absolutely. Me. <laughs> I, I can't say that myself. Um, the reason why I say that is because nobody has a crystal ball, mm -hmm. but where I see myself is really making um, good with the opportunities that I've been presented mm -hmm. and not taking things for granted. Uh, I try to make sure that I have an attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. every day and uh, mm -hmm. just spread love. Absolutely. <laughs> Because, just be be happy to yes. see the new day because uh, somebody uh, didn't. So I'm, I'm I'm grateful for everything I have and what I've experienced, and even the opportunity to be the acting dean mm -hmm. of liberal arts at Roxbury Community College. Yeah, and what what do you hope to accomplish for the next year from there as well? Um, accomplishing um, some goals on the next year. It will include several things, including but not limited to teaching and possibly possibly publishing one of the books that right. I have in mm -hmm. manuscript form. I can't wait to read it, you know. Awesome, you know. thank you. Yeah, it's gonna be a, be a bestseller. Mm -hmm. Thank you, y'all heard it here. It's gonna be a bestseller. You bet, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so wow, and um, so, any more, any more church travel plans? Or? Um, not as of right now. I think if, if I do anything, there, it's gonna be a staycation where it's gonna oh, yeah. be um, places local to uh, this area, but I believe um, in the long run, uh, again, an, another cruise is coming, maybe Absolutely. within the next two years. And hopefully within the next two years, also I'll be going to Africa oh, yeah. um, uh, to, to explore and enjoy um, the motherland and, yeah. uh, and just be where it is that uh, my ancestors came from. Yeah, my dad, my dad was actually born in Africa, so I want to try and go myself. You oh, know. nice. I think it was born in Germany, Africa, or in Lagos, so I want okay. to try and go myself, you know, and because because that's going to be a dream come true, you know. See, Absolutely. See where answers come from, you know. So I hope, hope we could do that together, you know. That, yeah, That'd be a blessing. Let's, let's, let's coordinate. Absolutely. That's a blessing, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what, was, so what was it like for you growing up? What was it like for me growing up? It was interesting growing up. Um, I, did a, I did a lot of playing outside, which I noticed a lot of individuals yeah. do not do today. Yeah. So um, I really enjoy being outside. Um, I actually had an opportunity to have a paper route, and so I, I was pretty used to getting up early in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, uh, getting things done. So I'm kind of an early bird, yeah. so to speak, in terms of uh, getting my day started. Okay. So it was it was good though. It was good. That's good. Yeah. As long as you're a child, yeah, that's good. That's all I managed, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, so one more question. So what was it like growing up? You have to deal with racism. I know it affects everybody. You know how did how did it affect you? 
and how does it affect you now? Okay, so interestingly enough, um, the, the long and short of it, I didn't really realize what racism was mm -hmm. as, a, as a youth. Um, I've experienced it from time to time. Um, in, I want to say my early 20s, but racism in and of itself is something that is a, is a sickness mm -hmm. um, and systematic. So it's not really a person, it's, a, it's, it's really a system. And so uh, what do I do with racism? Mm -hmm. I navigate it. Okay. All right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and yeah, I did send it to you, know, I, I try and annoy you, because know, I feel like it's a, something that's something so I had to deal with heaven, so you know. Yeah, I don't ignore it, I okay. just navigate it. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Okay. So how can my so how can my, our fans follow you on social media? All right. If individuals would like to follow me on social media, you can look me up on uh, LinkedIn, Dr. Maya T. Bowen. Okay. Oh, that's a wonderful hand. This is a wonderful interview, and I'm so glad you came on my show today. You know, and I thank you all for tuning to the show today and support me and my show, the Jamin Show. It's blessing to have you here, and I also thank you, Dr. T. Bowen. Thank you for the invitation Absolutely. today. You're, you're welcome on my show anytime you want to come on. You know, thank so you. Blessing to have my show. And thank you so much. Absolutely. So, much success. Thank you. Much love. I appreciate you all. Thank, thank you. you. See you in the show. Thank you. Right.